So no one in this station's had their phone clone before? <laughs> Rather you than me, mate. Sitting in the car with some nerd holding the scanner. Nick. Sarge. So, what about you then, Sarge? Where are you going? Hey, lad. I'll see you mate, about the dog. See you later, Sarge. Hold on, Ken. You're not going to introduce me to your friend? Yeah, sure. Uh, Charlie, this is my sergeant. Uh, D.S. Hunter, this is Charlie Wright. Charlie Wright, D.S. Hunter. Charlie. I'm Phil. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Phil. Are you coming with us? Uh, no, no. Uh, D.S. Hunter's got prior commitments. Haven't you, Sarge? Oh, nothing that can't wait. Besides, somebody's got to put a stop to this phone cloning business before it gets out of hand. Yeah? Well, why don't you come along with us? You can hold the aerial. Sure. Uh, Charlie, I think I ought to warn you that he's a bit of a... Ladies' man? <laughs> yeah, well, don't say you haven't been told. It's not hard to spot, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know you don't know the meaning of the word tapped, but there are ways of telling people their partners have been messing around, you know. No point beating around the bush, is there? Well, I reckon we should have a look at Doran's phone bills. See what they throw up. I say she's the one we should be checking out. She's got the computer, the expertise. And she's got more than one axe to grind where Lucy's concerned. You getting any signals yet? It's a bit too early to say. So how do you two know each other then? Oh, Ken and I met, what was it, two years ago? Yeah, yeah, a bunch of guys selling dodgy phones in a pub. 50 quid ago, unlimited calls. Unlimited calls? Yeah. How's that scam work? Well, you're interested. I'm very interested. Well, they buy a pay-as-you-go phone, so there's no contract. Mm -hmm. Then they get it chipped, so it's constantly showing in credit. They're on the phone to the mates all day, never buying any phone cards. So how'd you stop them? It shows up at the phone company. The company gives them a ring, asks them who they are, where they bought the last phone card. That usually does the trick. They know they've been rumbled, and the company disconnects the phone. Yeah, well, I don't know disconnecting my phone until we find it. That signal's the only lead we've got. No, we don't even have that yet. Could you, uh, point that up a bit? Whoa! Look at this! Is it mine? Certainly is, and it's coming through loud and clear. Uh, you should be able to leave these here till the end of the shift. Yeah, thanks. That's worth saying goodbye, isn't it? Hey. Oh, actually, it, it, it wasn't Sean. It was my decision to end it. What happened, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know, really. It's my fault. It just wasn't working for me anymore. You're not going to tell anybody about this, are you? No, of course not. DC Drum and Sun Hill. I think you've got my phone, son. Wouldn't mind if we come in? That's how he tuned into your signal. What's your name? Billy Doyle. This your place? You live here alone? Ken! What's this? They're all cloned. Busy calling a premium rate number, which is owned by... Me. The timer's set to come on every 15 minutes. It makes the call, and then after the required time, it hangs up. We must be raking it in. It's a living. Quite an easy way to make money, considering it costs 75 pence a minute to call these numbers. Pound, actually. What's your plan? Well, I don't really have one. Just play it by ear for now, see what turns up. Jim, this mobile number, it's also registered to Doran. I think it might be Karen's phone. Well, maybe it is. Okay, okay, calm down. Doran's been seen her again and Karen's found out. But tears went for our benefit. Straight away. Well, let's look at her bill first and see whose number comes up. Okay. Jim, Lucy Corrigan on the phone. Graham Doran's phone. Jerry says he's going over there to kill her. Another domestic over at the Saunders place. The Luke and Kerry are on their way over. Sarge? Yeah, go on, deal with it. I'll inform the CPT. So bang goes that theory, eh, Kathy? All right, come on. Sergeant Ackland. Sir. It's about PC Carver and his decision to stand down as FLO. Oh, 
Why is there a problem? Uh, I rather thought you could answer that for me. I thought PC Carver made his reasons perfectly clear. He felt he couldn't give the job his best because PC Stout was a friend. That's not what he said when he took the job on. He seemed to think there'd be no conflict of interests. And now suddenly there is. I, I don't quite follow you. Well, let me spell it out for you. I'd like to know the real reason PC Carver stood down. You've got it. Sergeant, I'm not an idiot. I know when something's being covered up, it's what I'm good at. So, you can tell me now, or I will take this to your superintendent. Either way, whatever it is you're hiding, I am going to find out. Hey, Kerry. What happened? A bit of a punch-up. I don't think Saunders did too well against Dwyer. Mind you, hitting women is more Saunders' thing from what I've seen in the past. You know what, it was over. Yeah, the CPT came to see him earlier on today. He's a bit upset, understandably. So he decided to come round here and make his feelings perfectly clear to Saunders. What's Saunders saying? That he never laid a finger on the boy. He's angry that Dwyer could accuse him of something like that. One word led to another, yeah. and yeah. Anyone press charges? Is it all calm in there, then? Yeah, I don't think it will kick off again. All right. You might as well go. Thank you. Cheers. Lee, I'm Brandon, Sunhill Police. Listen, I promise you I'm going to do my best to sort all this out, OK? Hey, you all right, son? Doing it. Mr. and Mrs. Saunders, hi. I'm TDC Kane. I'll be your family liaison officer from here on in. Where's the other one, eh? Not interested anymore. Fat lot of good he did anyway. And where's Stamp? Back at work? It was in the changing room after a football match. One of our officers saw Lee Dwyer give Tony Stamp a hug. You know, just to say thanks for. So why didn't the officer come straight to me with this? But he didn't think anything of it at the time. How long have you known about this? I've only just found out, sir. Of course you have. The officer who gave you this information, what's his name? DC Danny Glaze. Look, sir, Tony Stamp is a good copper. He's not a nonce. Thank you, PC Carver. Is that everything? If you do happen to hear anything else, don't hesitate. Happy families, eh? That could have been me in ten years' time. Maybe I had a lucky escape. I split up with Martin. Oh, sorry. Not half as sorry as I am. I'm gonna end up a lonely old spinster. <laughs> what? Please, come on. What's so funny? Girls like you do not end up on the shelf. Says who? They just don't. Some of them end up with ugly blokes, yeah. They do not end up on the shelf. So you're saying I'm going to end up with an ugly bloke? Great. There's hope for me yet. Come on, spinster. Look, what are the CPT asking me questions for, eh? I know who's done it. What's the matter? She not enough here, yeah? is that it? You what? So All right, you come on, just calm down for a moment, please, Mr Saunders, could you...? Lee, you don't want to hear all this shouting, do you? Yeah, yeah, go on. You go to your room, play your games. Hey, there ain't going to be any more fighting here. I've said my bit. All right? It's him for the go, yeah? Ah, he's a good kid, you know. He never had any trouble when he's with me. God. It breaks my heart when I don't see him. 